Coming up in the morning edition, citizens brought before environmental court and fined. BET set to receive a counter proposal, and our Charles Russell retires. Welcome to the Morning Edition. I'm LaDawn Davis and I've got the blues. Not because I'm sad, but because I'm celebrating Autism Awareness Day and I'm seeing everything in shades of blue. Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean, who also has the blues, is going to tell you how weather is shaping up today. Good morning, Basil. Uh, good morning, LaDawn and our towel cam showing uh, just blue sky. So there were just a few specks of cloud floating around and that's the head of a frost system that's heading this way. We'll tell you all about that later in the newscast. But right now we go to our satellite picture. High pressure continues uh, to influence our weather. You can see that foam boundary now over northern Florida. That's heading our way. We'll get in here late tonight during the early morning hours. Outside of our studios, clear skies, temperature 64 degrees. We have calm winds, barometric pressure 1,019.4 millibars. That's 30.10 inches, and it is steady. Temperatures around the outlets this morning, Marsh Harbor at 66, 65 in Green Toll Key. Also Freeport at 65 degrees in the Berry Island, 75, 76 in Allistown, Bimini, 74 in Harbor Island, Roxanne, Elutra, 73, Artistown, Canal, and at 71 degrees, 73 in Standard Key, Camp Space, Old Andros, also Fresh Creek in Central Andros. In San Salvador and Rum Key, 71 degrees, 74 in Ragged Island, Clownstown, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, 75, Ackland, 75, Matthew Town, and Niagara, 76, and the Turks and Caicos Islands at 74 degrees. And your boating forecast for today in the Northwestern Islands, south to southwest winds ahead of that front. Full speeds, they've got to be around 10 to 15 knots, wave fights 2 to 4 feet. High tide 552 this morning, the low tide at 1212 this afternoon. For the central Bahamas, light and rebel winds with very flat seas, 1 to 3 feet over the ocean. For the southeast Bahamas, southeast winds 10 to 15 and the wave fights 2 to 4 feet. That's going to do it for your first look at weather in the morning edition. Stay tuned, your forecast for today and tonight is still ahead. Thanks a lot, Basil. And now let's head on over to our Jiminy Swain, who is standing by with our traffic drone and the Bahamas First Traffic Report. The Traffic Report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance, today, tomorrow. Good morning, LaDon, and good morning, Bahamas. As you can see, our live drone shot is giving you an idea of what's happening here at the roundabout on West Bay Street and Sanders Beach. Not too busy as yet for the morning, but a beautiful day shaping up. It's also World Autism Day, so if you haven't left out yet, you still have the opportunity to put on your blue in celebration and recognition. Of course, now, some persons were hauled before the courts yesterday in reference to some of the recent traffic fatalities that we had. And to talk about that and whether we're going to see more instances of that come up is, of course, Corporal DeCorey Barr of the Police Traffic Division. Good morning, Corporal Barr. Uh, good morning, Jimenita. Good morning, Bahamas. Now, as we mentioned, uh, some persons were before the courts yesterday reference to the recent fatalities um, that we had within the last week or two. Are we expected to see more of that? Uh, I know that we often tell persons that they shouldn't leave the scene of accidents and why they shouldn't leave the scene of accidents, but you're going to see more of this coming up? Yes. Um, with, with all matters, traffic matters, fatalities, uh, somebody has to be held responsible. And uh, once we find through our investigations who that person is, we are nine times out of ten that somebody is going to be charged and sent to court for that offense. Now we find that uh, in a lot of instances, most persons leave the scene because they don't have insurance or maybe the vehicle doesn't belong to them. What do you say to persons in that position that opt to jump behind the wheel? Well, uh, first of all, if you're not a, a valid, the holder of a valid driver's license, then you shouldn't be operating that vehicle unless you're on a driving lesson or something of that sort. And then the law allow you certain things that you should be should have done before getting behind the, the wheel of that car. Um, but when we find ourselves in that predicament and then being involved in an accident, the best thing to do is still stay on the scene. Um, the damage is already done. You already did what you did, and it doesn't make sense to make the matter even worse by just leaving. So you're just saying, be responsible, take responsibility for yes, your yes. actions. Yes, just stay on the scene, and it would help us greatly uh, with the initial stages of our investigations. No matter how 
minor or serious the accident is. Now, um, can you tell us whether or not there are any ins, uh, accidents on the streets that our motoring public should be aware of as they make their morning commute? At this time, we're having a fairly quiet morning. Uh, we have no reported accidents as well as no congestions or roadworks to hinder our motorists through their morning commute today. Now, anything we also, before we go, should say to motorcyclists that are on the streets as well. We often know that they need to wear their helmets, but sometimes the motorists often are not focus on them either. Yes, uh, what, what we also find now is that persons wear helmets, but uh, they're not regulated helmets, um, which in some incident, incident, incidents, you would find that the helmet is not, I guess, more appropriate for, for the type of riding that you're doing. And that would still be an, a factor with the injuries that you could receive if you're involved in an accident. Uh, so we'd advise motorists to just not only wear your helmet, to make sure that you have a, a proper helmet for the uh, motorcycle that you're wearing, riding. Well, thank you so much. Of course, that is Corporal DeCorey Bar of the Police Traffic Division. Like I say, a beautiful day shaping up. You still have the opportunity to put on your purple, I mean, not your purple, your blue, <laughs> and pop for Autism Awareness Day. Back to you in Studio Ladon. Thanks, Jim Anita. Today is Autism Awareness Day and REACH, Resources and Education for Autism and Related Challenges, was formed in 1999 by parents who could not find suitable educational placements for their children locally. A special education teacher who saw that need noted that even within a special education setting, students with autism needed a more visual, structured curriculum led by a speech therapist who knows the importance of early diagnosis and intervention for this lifelong disorder. Here with us this morning on the morning edition is Dwayne Gibson, chairman of Reach's board and Greer Bain, board member. Welcome to the morning edition. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. So Dwayne, talk to us a little bit about what does this day actually mean for Reach Bahamas? Well, what it means is that we're able to celebrate our children who have been diagnosed on the spectrum. This is our seventh Light It Up Blue ceremony that we're going to be having tonight. And really all around the world, you would see landmarks lit up in blue, historical buildings. Uh, in the past, we've seen uh, the Eiffel Tower, the Sydney Opera House. We've seen uh, the Empire State Building lit in blue. And tonight, we're going to have two of our signature buildings lit in blue. How many members are a part of REACH, and what are some of the challenges REACH has been facing over the years? Uh, we have about 100 members. Uh, we have a board of directors that leads the organization. Uh, some of the challenges remain just trying to find placements for our kids, appropriate therapies, um, just being able to provide support on a monthly basis to our parents is very important, but those are a couple of the challenges we face. Great, a big night tonight. Talk us a little bit about some of the activities planned, I guess, for the month of April. So this is Autism Awareness Month, as you mentioned, and we're kicking off the month by having a lighted up blue ceremony this evening in Rosman Square, where we'll, uh, so there's going to be a simultaneous lighting of the House of Parliament and the Prime Minister's office. So exciting tonight. And then continuing on for the month of um, April, we have uh, Friday. Every Friday is T-shirt day, where we're, where we're asking corporate Bahamas to get involved by wearing T-shirts. Uh, we're asking you to please sponsor your workers by purchasing T-shirts and having everybody show up in their blue. And then we're also going to have an Easter egg, egg hunt um, for the REACH uh, children um, on the 22nd. And that will be um, at the REACH office, which is going to be, which is, uh, sorry, um, on the QC grounds. Um, and then we're also having an open house, which is also on the 24th of April, and there will be a support meeting after open house. So we're asking parents to, you know, if you have a child that um, you are interested in finding out information, please come to the office, come out to the support meeting. You may, you know, want to speak with other parents. You may want to speak with therapists or other professionals who may be able to help you. Any new initiatives on tap this year for REACH? Well, we continue with our signature summer camp, uh, which will happen in June. July. Um, it's a free summer camp that we sponsor. Uh, REACH is known to bring in therapists from month to month to talk to our members about different topics. Last month we had a really, really great neurological mm -hmm. sleep therapist mm -hmm. who came in and that was quite helpful. Yes. Um, talking a little bit more about the activities, we also have a fun run walk. You always mm -hmm. have to have a fun run mm -hmm. walk, right? Yes. So <laughs> we, we're having that on April the 27th at the Montague Foreshore. And we, 
I think we're also going to have a Spectrum of Jazz event this year yes. as well, which should be fun. This will be our mm -hmm. second annual Spectrum of Jazz event on May 11th. Wow. So we're asking Corporate Bahamas, please come and support us. The tickets are about $125, but all the proceeds go towards putting forward all our initiatives. So this year we continue on with trying to assist the parents, provide therapy opportunities, provide support. Dwayne and Greer, thank you so much for joining thank us you. here on the Morning Edition. And best of luck for Autism Awareness Month. Thank, thank you, you. Dawn. Thank you. Both. Stay close. We've got more news right after this. You're watching the Morning Edition. all got plans for our golden years. Unfortunately for many, this may just be wishful thinking. To generate an annual income in retirement of $70,000 for 20 years at a rate of return of 5%, with inflation running at 3%, requires more than $1.1 million. So how do you save that much money? Many companies provide a group pension plan to help their employees by deducting an amount each month from their pay to contribute to the plan. Personal pension plan, or PPP, is similar to a group plan but offered only to individuals. These plans offer many of the same benefits and features. Contact us for more information on pensions. Welcome back to the Morning Edition. A number of persons were fined Monday for breaching the country's environmental laws. That includes Mackey Street resident Mark Monroe, who was fined $250 or five days behind bars for allowing derelict vehicles and overgrown vegetation on his property. Fleming Street resident Kim Davis was also fined $100 or five days behind bars after pleading guilty to allowing an accumulation of waste on her premises. The environmental court continues this morning, April the 2nd. Attorney Maria Sancola Willie is prosecuting the cases. Bahamas Union of Teachers set to receive a counter proposal from the Ministry of Education for a new industrial agreement within days. BUT President Belinda Wilson says a submission was made in June 2018 and she expects that a response from government officials pretty soon. We are waiting for, and we, um, with braided breath, is the um, government's counter proposal for the negotiations to begin and the minister would have spoken to me so hopefully we'll have that in our hands within the matter of days. Wilson says the agreement once approved will run from 2018 to 2021 and will cover a plethora of issues including health benefits and safety. Not only um, salaries and benefits but also terms and conditions of work related to the curriculum, related to health and safety in the schools. So um, the, the announcement of the expansion of, of the um, awards and tuition going toward masters and PhDs this, um, this morning, it's a really, really welcoming um, announcement. Recently, a team from Johns Hopkins Medicine International visited the Ministry of Health where they met with the Minister of Health and other key officials from the Public Hospitals Authority and the Department of Public Health. Discussions focused on possible opportunities for partnerships with the PHA and Ministry of Health on initiatives that will result in long-term improvements to health care in this country. The preliminary discussion included opportunities to improve hospital services, redevelop community-based health care, and the possibility of raising $200 million to eventually expand the Princess Margaret Hospital campus to include a state-of-the-art A&E Children's and Maternal Health Tower. Discussions also included an opportunity for initiatives to enhance government clinics across the country into branded primary care urgent care facilities, promoting greater access to quality care for communities throughout this country. A key benefit of partnership will be the opportunity for public health and clinical training for staff through world-renowned institutions such as the Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Arawak Port Development this year has turned 10 and is celebrating in May with a maritime festival. APD CFO Dion Bethel says this is a proud moment for the organization as it has worked extremely hard to active stellar performance and standards within the region. We have rigorous training and ongoing training for all of our team members to ensure that they maintain cutting edge. Likewise, with our technology that we offer for the various systems that we have within our port community and our stakeholders. And one that is coming on stream is with Bahamas Customs and their electronic single window. 
Bethel says this also extends to an annual audit process, which has been getting better from day one. He added that continued training has also helped to improve productivity at the port. We have rigorous training and ongoing training for all of our team members to ensure that they maintain cutting edge. Likewise, with our technology that we offer for the various systems that we have within our port community and our stakeholders. And one that is coming on stream is with Bahamas Customs and their electronic single window. And still to come, we're going to take a look at how the police are involved in urban renewal. That and more when the morning edition comes right back. After an exciting and intense competition, Donato MacDonald of Forest Heights Academy in Abaco is this year's Junior Minister of Tourism. He presented an amazing speech and competed with 12 other students from around the country, speaking on the topic of tourism linkages for a diversified economy. It might sound cliche, but words can't even describe. <laughs> words can't describe. I feel the hard work paid off. I did what I was supposed to do. The mystery question felt very really confident in it, and after that, everything just fell into place. Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dionisio Diaguilar, spoke on how the competition's topic was a timely one. Ladies and gentlemen, in order for our nation to take tourism to the next level, to ensure that more Bahamians secure a stake in our tourism economy, we must invite our brightest minds to reflect on the subject of creating greater linkages to our tourism industry with a view to diversifying our economy. As the new Junior Minister of Tourism, Donato will not only receive the prestigious title, but also the Patrick S. Bain Scholarship, an opportunity to represent the Bahamas at the Caribbean Tourism Organization Youth Congress, a cash prize from Alive, and a floating trophy to commemorate the accomplishment. To follow Donato on his journey as Junior Minister, please visit Bahamas.com. This is Rusey Demerit for Tourism Today. The Urban Renewal Program has been around since the early 2000s and is community policing where the public interacts with police in a gentler fashion as opposed to only law enforcement. There are nine urban renewal centers here in New Providence headed by Superintendent Philip Rowe. He believes that his officers have positively impacted the community in the many roles they have. Urban officers are community officers. When you... Uh assigned to these areas, you know that you have to assist um, in the community, you have to be a preacher, you have to be a teacher, you have to be a counselor, and um, you know, there's a lot of things you, you come across and you have to be up to the task and ready to handle because there are a lot of things going on out there, all the persons who need assistance and the officer have to switch from that hard nose uh, policing to more being um, a little affectionate and um, channel persons in the right direction whether they need to go to social services. The Urban Renewal Band with 100 members has been a source of pride with an emphasis of teaching discipline to the children. It is headed by Corporal Anthony Capron who wants to start Urban Renewal Bands in each of nine centers here in the capital. Urban Renewal Band seeks to use music as a crime-fighting mechanism. We seek to teach young people who have no outlet basically um, and put them on the right path through music at the same time building self-esteem um, manners and discipline within themselves to, to better the nation because I don't I'm not sure if you know but a lot of doctors and lawyers out there they have some type of musical background so the urban renewal band in the communities is something that we we hope to foster throughout the entire Bahamas and build better citizens of the country. Last weekend, 10 students were awarded scholarships totaling $331,000 to attend Florida Memorial University at a college fair. Six are public school students, three from CW, CW Bethel Senior High and three from the R.M. Bailey Senior High School. We got the chance to speak with them on their $16,000 scholarships. So tell me, what did you get? On-site acceptance. On-site. On-site acceptance. On-site. Wow. 
and I feel very excited. I didn't know I was going to get shoes, and it's been a great experience coming out here. So um, I'm excited, man. I think it's great, and I think it's a good opportunity to give people chances that really wants to go to college and do something in life. After 41 years of stellar work here at the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, Assistant General Manager with Responsibility for Television Administration Charles Russell is retiring. On Monday, a luncheon was held in his honor. Russell was employed at ZNS in 1977 as a production assistant, later elevating to Director of Programming and now Assistant General Manager in Television Administration. He recalls his fond memories. I've been here for 41 plus years uh, to leave to leave your family is not easy I will miss Zeranas honestly I will but there comes a time when you have to move on um, to fulfill your, your destiny your purpose I believe um, it will be hard but um, I will keep the the, 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 the contacts that I've made are uh, through friends and family here at ZNS. To really want to work and stay at ZNS was at that same time in 1977, they, they were opening the, the television station. And of course, ZNS was the first uh, television station in the country, so it was very exciting here. I, and my first three months, I didn't stay in radio building at all. I came over into television a lot because there was a lot of excitement here. And then eventually I got a transfer into television and been here ever since. Happy retirement to you, Charlie, from all Charlie, of us here on the Morning Edition. Charlie's still looking the same like he did. I'm not saying I'm old or I've been here long, but you're looking Very the same old. like from my go here at Sadness. <laughs> uh, wishing him the best. So what's coming up in sports? What's coming up in sports? The Jolly Green Giants of St. John's are the champions of the City Girls Basketball Championship World held over there in Grand Bahama. They're going to be celebrating today, and I'm proud to be a Green Giant today, finally. That and more ahead in sports. <laughs> 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 On the next A Closer Look with Anthony Newbold, Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd. What we are hearing more and more from the employers, uh, and that's not just only here in the Bahamas, but elsewhere, that students, once they exit high school or college, need to come to the workplace equipped with skills that can be utilized immediately. You've got to be able to deal with the 21st century technology. Well, that's a question about that. This is why for us, at the Ministry of Education, our emphasis on technology and the fact that we seek to digitize the educational system within the next 18 months or thereabouts is powerful. Tune in to A Closer Look, Monday at 8 p.m. and Wednesday at 9 a.m. on the ZNS Television Network. Good morning once again. The National High School Basketball Championships all completed on the senior girls' side. It's the Jolly Green Giants of St. John's completing a perfect season with a 56-44 win over the Big Red Machine of Sock. In the process, completing a perfect season, Michelle Butler led the Giants with 17 points, 14 rebounds. Christina Richardson, 15 points, 11 rebounds. And for Sock, Anton Nisha Moultrie, 23 points and 18 rebounds. The Jolly Green Giants will return home this morning with the trophy. On the senior boys' side, that trophy will stay in the second city again. St. George's Jaguars became the first two-time champs with a 62-57 win over the Tabernacle Falcons. Paul Green with a gutsy performance, 22 points and 17 rebounds to be named MVP. Samuel Pinder chipped in with 19. Joshua Dames led Tabby with a game like 26. Ethan Munro out of 19. All the highlights coming up later on today. Well, the second annual Cat Island Fish Off, all set to begin on Wednesday. Joining us this morning from the bite is tournament organizer Sh Herman Gilbert. And Herman, good morning. And how are things looking? Good morning, Fisher, and good morning, Bahamas. Yes, we are here at Space Bay Dock, live, we're preparing, everyone is out here. The vendors are here, I'm doing their last minute preparation. As you can see, <coughs> boaters are heading out early this morning, and they're making sure they get the fishing in grounds covered. They're making sure that um, um, they're ready to win this first prize, um, $2,000. The actual competition starts on Thursday. What is the lineup for the waters? 
Pine Lang Fishing. Um, Bimini start is 8 a.m. All boats must be back in by 5 p.m. on Thursday. Friday is going to be diving, spare diving. 8 a.m. Bimini start, 5 p.m. be back at the dock. Saturday is going to be deep drop. Bimini start, 8 a.m. All boats are, uh, must be back at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So looking for an exciting weekend over there in Cat Island. And that's going to do it for sports. The Jolly Green Giants of St. John Senior Girls National Champs didn't lose a game all season. For the latest news and highlights in Bahamian culture, tune in to the new Chunkadoo 242, Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on the ZNS Radio and Television Network. Radio Bahamas, 1540 a.m. and 104.5 FM and TV 13. Each week, hosts Arlene Nash Ferguson and Darren Bastiat engages listeners with some of the movers and shakers of Junkadoo and Bahamian culture. Don't miss Junkadoo 242, Saturday at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on the ZNS Radio and Television Network. In our final look at where our satellite pictures are showing near clear skies over much of the northwest and central Bahamas, but there are little patches of cloud in the extreme southeast Bahamas. But most importantly, we have this frontal boundary across northern Florida. It's making its way towards the southern east. We expect it to get into the northwest Bahamas late tonight and during the early morning hours. At that time, could bring about some passing showers. Behind it, the winds are expected to pick up going into uh, Wednesday at around 15 to 20 knots, so caution flags will be going up for you boaters. Today, we're looking at periods of clouds and sunshine, a stray shower here and there, 80 degrees for your high. And tonight we're looking at partly cloudy, a passing shower developing late as that frontal system gets a little closer, low temperature getting down to 67 degrees. And the extended weather forecast, very little change in your daytime temperatures. They will remain in the low 80s, nighttime temperatures in the upper 60s. We're going to pick back up into the 70s by Friday heading into the weekend. Let on. Thanks a lot, Basil. That's it for us today. Join us at 7 a.m. tomorrow for a brand new morning edition. Just before we go, let's say a special happy birthday greeting to Veronica Hutchinson, who is celebrating her birthday today. I'm LaDawn Davis. Remember to light it up blue. Have a great day, everyone.